Hello to all. I am Vishnu. So in this video, I am going to talk about amazing facts about ACE inhibitors. And the purpose of this video is not just to give you an awareness about ACE inhibitors or amazing facts about ACE inhibitors that I am going to share. But it will also give you an insight as in how I study pharmacology in a smart and effective manner. Because you know, uh, even I was struggling with that for a lot of years and many people are struggling with it now. You know, I am in touch with a lot of people and they always tell me that remembering is very tough. So obviously it is going to be a challenge because pharmacology is a huge science and so many things are there and uh, it's not easy. But what we can do is we can make complicated things simple. Whatever things we can study in the simplest of manner, we will learn in that way. So let's talk about ACE inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors, they act on the RAS pathway, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So RAS pathway, you know very well that the last product is aldosterone. Aldosterone has two major functions. First function, sodium and fluid retention. So sodium and fluid retention means it will increase your blood pressure. Fluid retention means it can lead to edema also. The second one is the most dangerous that is called cardiac remodeling. You can just refer what you mean by cardiac remodeling. It's literally very, very dangerous because it can lead to significant mortality in heart failure. If you look at the pathophysiology of heart failure and if you connect it with the RAS pathway after aldosterone, there is a narrow mark which mentions cardiac remodeling. So ACE inhibitors, what they do is they block the enzyme ACE, which is released from the lungs. So as a result of which they prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And as a result of which um, the last product that is aldosterone is not produced and all the remaining steps that I said will not occur. So they help in reducing blood pressure, good for hypertension and they also help in preventing mortality in heart failure because Aldosterone is blocked means cardiac remodeling will not occur. Now, uh, if we look at the interesting aspects of ACE inhibitors, there is a molecule known as captopril. First of all, you need to understand that all the ACE inhibitors end with P-R-I-L, pril. Captopril, ramipril, fosinopril, lisinopril, perindopril, etc. etc. Captopril, if you are taking captopril, you should take it on an empty stomach. Because food reduces the absorption of captopril. So the patients are advised to take it at least one hour before food. This is only for captopril. Captopril is the shortest acting ACE inhibitor. That means the duration of action is very, very, very short. Ramipril and perindopril are the longest acting ACE inhibitors. Ramipril and perindopril are the longest acting ACE inhibitors. In fact, ramipril is very commonly used in heart failure patients. If you look at the bioavailability, captopril has the maximum bioavailability that is approximately 75% and uh, lisinopril has the shortest bioavailability that is approximately 25%. All the ACE inhibitors are excreted by kidney except Fosinopril and Spiraprill. Spiraprill is not very commonly used. Fosinopril and Spiraprill, they are equally excreted by the liver and the kidney. If you look at the side effects of ACE inhibitors, the first thing that comes in mind is hyperkalemia. So you need to understand why hyperkalemia occurs. If you look at the RAS pathway, as I said, the last product is aldosterone and the function of aldosterone is sodium and fluid retention. Now, when sodium retention is blocked, the enemy of sodium is potassium. So, when sodium reduces, potassium increases. So, as a result of which, potassium elevates and hyperkalemia occurs. And definitely, it causes severe hypotension also because it reduces fluid retention. So, fluid volume reduces and at the same time, sodium is also reduced. So, it can cause hypotension to some extent. There is another reason for hypotension as well. And that is ACE inhibitors prevent the breakdown of bradykinin. That means ACE inhibitors and bradykinin are best friends. ACE inhibitors and bradykinin are best friends. Now this bradykinin has four functions. Number one, 
it is very good in vasodilation so it helps in reducing blood pressure number 2 it actually increases the level of insulin that means bradykinin and insulin are also very good friends that is why if a patient is suffering from diabetes and if they have heart failure or if they have hypertension also ace inhibitors might be a good choice because ace inhibitors increase bradykinin and bradykinin improves insulin resistance the third uh, aspect of uh, bradykinin is it causes dry cough so this is a very significant side effect that is seen with ace inhibitors and that is dry cough so that is why if a patient is uh, suffering from recurrent cough and it is impacting their quality of life we usually shift from ace inhibitors to angiotensin receptor blockers because angiotensin receptor blockers have nothing to do with bradykinin the fourth aspect of bradykinin is that it causes angioedema so it is a kind of histamine like reaction in which you are having hypersensitivity so in the lower part of your lips on your neck or something there will be swelling so it will be like some honey bee or something wasp or something has bitten you so you will experience swelling those kind of swellings will happen and it is actually very dangerous because it can stifle or it can block your normal breathing process also so if you are experiencing any kind of you know angioedema like features or something or even if you are experiencing rashes also because rashes also occur with ace inhibitors due to this bradykinin function only so in that on that stage itself you should stop the medicine and switch over to angiotensin receptor blockers so bradykinin has four functions number 1 it has vasodilatory properties so it reduces your blood pressure number 2 it improves insulin resistance so as a result of which if a patient is suffering from heart failure with diabetes or heart failure with uh, sorry hypertension with diabetes ace inhibitors can be a good option number 3 it produces a dry cough and number 4 it causes angioedema and you know very well that ace inhibitors are contraindicated in pregnancy and all the ras inhibitors are contraindicated in pregnancy it's not just ace inhibitors it can be direct renin inhibitor for example remikiren aliskiren angiotensin receptor blockers tell me certain all me certain candesartan valsartan whatever it is they are all contraindicated in pregnancy because if they are used in pregnancy then it can lead to significant teratogenicity causing conditions like oligohydramnios or hypocalvaria as well so oligohydramnios means they actually reduce the level of amniotic fluid so that can lead to hypocalvaria hypo means small calvaria means size of the skull and brain and all so uh, means it's a very very horrible condition so that is why we usually do not prefer ras inhibitors in pregnancy so these are some of the interesting aspects of ace inhibitors that i wanted to share with you so from this you might have got an insight into ace inhibitors number 1 and number 2 also as in how i study pharmacology you can just make notes and you can just read authentic references i've always told you which are the best references for pharmacology and you can upgrade yourself in the process thank you so much for listening to me i will be back with an interesting video very soon until then it's bye